I was a feisty nine-year-old when Dad took sick and left Mom and me sudden-like. That same year, the Great Depression hit the country, but it made no difference to us. We had nothing to begin with. Papers, only a nickel, papers! I sold newspapers on street corners. Occasionally, I moonlighted at night by picking up a bottle of milk from some front porch. And sometimes I picked up a pie from a pantry window. Our neighbors gave us pie and milk. Mary and baby Jesus, Joseph, and the star of Bethlehem. I remember when I was little, Dad used to lift me up and so I could put the star up on the tree. Like any other young boy, I reveled in the holiday sights and sounds. There would be no bounteous goodies under the tree. In fact, there would be no tree. That didn't seem right. At least the tree would ease the hurt. Christmas Day, I hurried to Peterson's Market. I figured that since the store was closed on Christmas morning and the unsold trees were usually thrown away, I was embarking on fair game. Nels Peterson was an old bachelor who could squeeze a nickel until the buffalo bellowed. Screws could take lessons from him. He was that mean. He could never keep up with me. Every year, I would outfox him. Peterson is keeping a close eye on his Christmas trees this year. I heard that he burns his leftover trees anyways. Wait, what if we help you get a Christmas tree this year? It would be us three versus his one. Oh, oh, hi, Mr. Peterson. What are you guys doing? Get off of here. I'm not Get out of here! Go home! Old man Peterson would eventually put up a fence to keep me out, but that didn't stop me. I don't know, it's like it walked here on its own. Then came a Christmas that I shall always remember. Teacher at school involved our class in making Christmas cards for our favorite person, not counting our families. I participated reluctantly. I made a humdinger for Nels Peterson. Why I included him as my favorite person, I didn't know. That's really good, Charlie. Who's it for? By the time I had finished, I felt a strange kinship for my adversary. Late Christmas Eve, when the stores were closed and everybody was home, I peered around the corner of the back of Peterson's Market cautiously. The gate was open. My first thought was that anyone that dumb deserved to lose a tree. My second thought was that maybe he's not so dumb. This could be a trap. I felt the whole world was watching me in the midst of a heinous crime. Just as I was about to turn and bolt, I saw the large, crudely lettered sign on the tree. Don't forget to pull the plug and lock the gate. Merry Christmas. I reached down for the connection and saw the presents and box of groceries. Mr. Peterson wasn't among the trees. He was somewhere throwing the switch and watching Merry me. Merry Christmas, Mr. Peterson. My new friend and I had learned a beautiful lesson on the joy of giving. All because a simple homemade Christmas card had touched a lonely heart and opened a locked gate.